be with you. Good morning. We are, um, a number of things happening today. One of the things is um, at the end of the worship service, we have 26 young people going to camp. So I'm going to have them come forward and uh, well, have a sending prayer for them. Our gospel lesson today is an appropriate one for everything that's happened this week. It is the parable of the Good Samaritan and the question, who is my neighbor? And you'll hear in the prayers, um, prayer for Karen Stiltner. Uh, Karen, I think I've mentioned to you, has been on health, uh, life support, and life support was removed yesterday afternoon. Uh, I was up at the hospital this morning. She is still uh, holding on, so we'll have prayers for her. Let's prepare our hearts for worship through the brief order of confession and forgiveness found on the third page of your bulletin. Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, abounding in steadfast love toward us, healing the sick and raising the dead, showering us with every good gift. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Just and gracious God, we come to you for healing in life. Our sins hurt others and diminish us. We confess them to you. Our lives bear the scars of sin. We bring these also to you. Show us your mercy, O God. Bind up our wounds, forgive us our sins, and free us to love. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Apostle Paul assures us, when we were dead in our trespasses, God made us alive together with Christ. Nailing the record of our sins to the cross, Jesus says to you, your sins are forgiven. Be at peace and tell everyone how much God has done for you. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Also with you. Share God's peace by greeting those around you.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Lord be with you. O oh Lord God, your mercy delights us, and the world longs for your loving care. Hear the cries of everyone in need, and turn our hearts to love our neighbors with the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen.
A reading from Deuteronomy. The Lord your God will make you abundantly prosperous in all your undertakings, in the fruit of your body, in the fruit of your livestock, and in the fruit of your soil. For the Lord will again take delight in prospering you just as he delighted in prospering your ancestors when you obey the Lord your God by observing his commandments and decrees that are written in this book of law. Because you in turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Surely this commandment that I am commanding you today is not too hard for you, nor is it too far away. It is not in heaven that you should say, who will go up to heaven uh, for us and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it. Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, who will cross to the other side of the sea for us and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it. No, the word is very near to you. It is in your mouth and in your heart for you to observe the word of the Lord. The psalmates are going to sing Psalm 25, Show Me Your Ways, O Lord. And if our AV people have it, you can read the words as we sing. Show me your ways, O Lord. Guide me in your truth and teach me, though I may sin, O Lord. Save me in your love and mercy. Good and upright is the Lord, instructing those who sin and stray. God drives the humble in the light and teaches them the Show me your ways, O oh Lord. Guide me in your truth and teach me, though I may sin, O oh Lord. Save me in your love and mercy. God is loving, God is true. To those who follow in the way, forgiving Savior, teacher, Lord, be with us all our ways. Show me your ways, O oh Lord. Guide me in your truth and teach me, though I may sin, O oh Lord. Save me in your love and mercy. God is loving, God is true. To those who follow in the way, forgiving Savior, teacher, Lord, be with us all our ways. Show me your ways, O oh Lord. Guide me in your truth and teach me, though I may sin, O oh Lord. Save me. A reading from Colossians. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ in Colossians, grace to you and peace from God our Father. In our prayers for you, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope laid for you in heaven. You have heard of this hope before in the word of the truth, the gospel that has come to you. Just as it is bearing fruit and growing in the whole world, so it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day you heard it and truly comprehended the grace of God. This 
you learn from Ephesus, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, and he has made known to us your love of the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him. As you bear fruit in every good work, and as you grow in the knowledge of God, may you be strong, made strong, with all the strength that comes from his glorious power. And may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father, who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins, the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Just then, a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But the, a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him. And when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil on them, oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back I will repay you whatever you spend. Which of these three, do you think, was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. I would like to invite the children to come forward. And this time, we can all sit on the front pew. Somebody's already... There we go. Good morning. Anybody bring popcorn? Okay, here's this, the parable of the Good Samaritan. There was, there was once a man traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho. On the way, he was attacked by robbers. Look at those robbers up there. They look pretty mean, don't you think? The road to Jericho was a windy road, went downhill, and there were a lot of robbers. So it was a dangerous place. They stripped him of his clothes. Did you know clothes were worth a lot of money back then? And money, beat him, and left him half dead on the side of the road. He does look half dead, almost looks dead. 
Luckily, a priest happened to be going down the same road. Wow. But when he saw the man lying there, he crossed the road and passed him by. Now, why do you think a priest would do that? He certainly knows better, don't you think? Well, there's two reasons that are given by the experts. One is that he was so concerned, you see, priest worked in the temple a lot like I do, and if he would touch somebody who was bleeding and get blood on himself, he would be contaminated and he couldn't go to work for seven days. And he just couldn't afford to take a vacation at that time. That's what some people think. The other thing is, you saw those mean robbers. He may have just been afraid. He'd be a victim too. So then, a temple assistant, we call him a Levite, saw him lying there. But he also passed on the other side. And the same two reasons are given for him that he didn't want to get contaminated because he couldn't go to work then, or he was just plain afraid. We don't know. Whatever it was, he didn't stop to help. But then this guy, he's an enemy. He's an enemy of the Jewish people. A Samaritan, he came along, and when he saw the man's condition, his heart went out to him. Kneeling beside him, the Samaritan cleaned his wounds and bandaged them. The text said he put wine and oil on them. Then he lifted him onto his donkey and took him to an inn. An inn is a hotel. And there he took care of him. In the morning he took out two silver coins, gave them to the innkeeper. Take good care of him, he said. If it costs any more, put it on my bill. I'll be back to pay you on my way back. Which of these three do you think did what Jesus would have done? Did you guys have breakfast this morning? <laughs> Maybe your parents need to start you on coffee, I think. <laughs> Wake you up a little bit. Who did what Jesus would have done? The Samaritan the enemy, right? He had compassion. And Jesus just says, ask us to try to help people, especially when we see them in need, okay? Let us pray. Repeat after me. Gracious God, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for his love. We thank you that he loves us So help us to love others, especially those in need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you can go back to your seats. The psalmates at the last minute practice that tune by singing the second verse first, then the first verse, and then the second verse again. In case you were read, reading the words and saw that we weren't following the words. But we didn't do it that way. <laughs> Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm sure you're all familiar with these words. It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood, a neighborly day for a beauty. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? I have always wanted to have a neighbor just like you. I've always wanted to live in a neighborhood with you. 
So let's make the most of this beautiful day. Since we're together, we might as well say, would you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? Well, with um, the events that have happened this past week, the shooting of two black men by police, armed black men, we could say, we, and the subsequent demonstrations, and the friendly demonstration in Dallas, which ended in the tragic then murder, assassination of five police officers and the shooting of seven others. We could say that more than ever, we do need Fred Rogers' neighborhood. And then on top of it, look at our world with the disasters happening. Hundreds killed this week by suicide bombs in Iraq. Christian churches destroyed and Christians killed in Pakistan. We need, it seems more than ever, Fred Rogers' neighborhood. I've already explained this text and how the Levite and the priest may have had very good reasons for passing the man by. And we often have good reasons for not doing. Oh, I've got my good clothes on. And when I do help someone and come back, Mick says, oh, you couldn't wear better clothes today to, to change someone's tire or whatever. I'm going to make two quick points. The first is, we are to believe. I realize it's sometimes hard to believe. I, I, especially when we put up our boundaries, we set up our boundaries to protect ourselves so that we do not get too overly involved with a situation that we shouldn't be that overly involved in. We set up those boundaries to protect ourselves. And too often, one of those boundaries is, oh, the person doesn't deserve it. Well, guess what? We don't deserve the blessings we receive. The other one is, oh, what if the person asking for this money is a fraud? What if? Well, the good news is we are to believe that God will work God's good in the good we do. God will work God's good in the good we do. Michael Peterson tells a story. Michael Peterson was on a talk show in Canada. And uh, he, he was just a, a guest host of this talk show. And on his way home after the first taping, he's in his luxury car driving down the road in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, and he stops at a stop site and he looks to the side and there is a homeless person sitting on the sidewalk, snow falling, he's in four inches of snow, the only cover he has is a um, piece of cardboard and then he notices the man has no shoes and socks. And he says to himself, oh, I should help that man. I should really help that man. The light changed and he goes, oh, I don't know what to do anyway. So he left, went to his luxurious four-star hotel and forgot about the man. A couple days later, he's back at the TV studio taping the morning show and all the guests, the celebrities, had left the green room and he's left there drinking his coffee and eating 
his Danish when the janitor walked in. And now the janitor is someone he just would say hi to, and the janitor was very nice and said, hi, and is there any way I can help you? But today, they're sitting there alone, so he asked the janitor, how's your day been? And the man said, you know, I have been feeling really sorry for myself. I've been having to ride my bicycle to work every day. He said, until a couple of days ago, I was on my way home, and I was going down the sidewalk on my bicycle, and there was a homeless man covered with a piece of cardboard who had no shoes and socks, and Michael Peterson said he almost choked on his Danish. And he asked, well, what did you do? He said, I went, went around the corner to the drugstore and I bought him a pair of socks and a pair of shoes. And he says, after that, I've been feeling pretty good. I've been pr feeling pretty good. Michael Peterson said, that should have been me. That should have been me. And he said it reminded him of a poster on the wall of one of his college friends' wall when he was in college. And it was just a, a little girl handing a flower to another person. And the caption read, The smallest deed always exceeds the grandest of intentions. The smallest deed always exceeds the grandest of intentions. We need to be people of faith and realize when we help people, especially, might even help an enemy, that God will work God's good in our good deed. Let me tell you a quick story about uh, Roberto Di Vincenzo. He's an Argentine golfer. This was back in the 1960s. A sports writer by the name of Jim Bishop wrote about him, and he said, Di Vincenzo won a PGA tournament. And back in those days, you didn't get the huge sums of money they get now, but he got a few thousand dollars. And as he was leaving the country club, a woman came up to him and he said, uh, Roberto, you've had a very good day. And Roberto said, yes, I've had a very good day. And then the woman said, well, my daughter, my child, has an incurable disease. And Roberto Steven Sinzo said, I'd like to help your daughter, pulled out his wallet, took out his check from his winnings, co-signed it over to the woman, and she left. A week later, he's in the country club, and one of the bigwigs from the PGA came and said, we've checked on that woman. She was a fraud. And Di Vincenzo thought for a moment and said, you mean there is no incurably sick child? And the PGA official says, that's exactly what I mean. And Di Vincenzo said, that's the best news I've heard in a long time. There is no incurably sick child. He was not going to let anyone rob him of the fact that God will work God's good in the good deeds that we do. The second thing, second point, oh, poem by Overstreet. I'm full of poems today. You say the little efforts that I make will do no good, 
They never will prevail to tip the hovering scale where justice hangs in balance. I don't think I ever thought they would, but I am prejudiced beyond debate in favor of my right to choose which side shall feel the stubborn ounces of my weight. Don't you love that? I am prejudiced beyond debate in favor of my right to choose which side shall feel the stubborn ounces of my weight. Okay, our neighbor is not necessarily someone we like. The Samaritan was considered a, an enemy of the Jews. Notice the lawyer, this is a religious lawyer, by the way, one who knows the religious law. Some equate him with a scribe. He couldn't even say when Jesus asked, which one of these did what God wanted him to do? And he can't say the Samaritan. He says, the one who showed mercy, the one who showed mercy. There are enemies. The person you are to see as your neighbor, and this is what we need to understand in our country more and more, the one who we are to see as our neighbor may not be someone we even like, care for. We might even consider them an enemy. Gustavo Gutierrez put it this way. He's a liberation theologian. The neighbor, he argued, is a person who is not already close to us, but someone that we must leave our own context, our own lives, our own paths in order to encounter. The wounded person in this story is not someone who is close. We do not know whether the person is good or kind or godly. We only know that the person is in need. There's a great story out of Pakistan. Uh, the Muslims are the majority in Pakistan. The Christians are the minority. And very often, for no apparent reason, a, a riot will begin and a mob will go and attack the Christian minority. I imagine the reverse happens, but uh, the majority often attacks, more often attacks the minority. In, in the town of Gojar, in the, um, there was a big riot, and the Muslims and the Christians lived in separate neighborhoods, and the Muslims attacked the Christian neighborhood, uh, caused looting and destroyed property, and destroyed churches and killed dozens of Christians. In a community not far away, a smaller town, it happened to be a community where the Muslims and the Christians lived side by side. They were literally neighbors. And the Muslims realized that their Christian neighbors could no longer go to Gojar to church because the churches had been destroyed. So the Muslim farmers, the Muslim farmers took up a collection, bought materials, and told the Christians they would build them a church in their own community. And it was interesting to see the Christians and the Muslims interact. And the Christians, the Muslims go to the Christian celebrations of baptisms and, uh, and other religious celebrations, and the Christians attend the Muslims' family celebrations and religious celebrations. It's an area where the Christians and the Muslims have learned to get along. When the Muslim leader was asked why they would do this, he said, what happened in Gojar must never happen here. 
So today, we learn that Jesus, one who loves us so much, simply asks us to love those in need, even if they happen to be an enemy. Amen. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Gracious God, your word is very near to us, building up your church and keeping it faithful to your word. Make our witness to your love strong and clear, Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, you have taught us that anyone in need is our neighbor, and you have shown us that whoever responds with compassion toward another is following your will. Inspire the whole human race with such benevolence and care that everyone on earth may find help and comfort in time of need. We pray and lament the ongoing violence in our world and across our country. We pray and lament the loss of lives due to gun violence and racism. We pray for the needs of the whole human family. Lord, in your mercy. Protecting God, sustain police officers, firefighters, EMTs, and others who attend to public safety. Uphold those who are sick, injured, or who will die this day. We pray especially for Meredith Adams, Ryan Backus, Larry Carlson, Terry Carlson, Tracy Cleveland, 
Pam Cole, Carolyn Callan, Lucy and Lyle Dolly, Wayne DeLargy, Sandy Drake, Ron Fells, Jeff, Jeff Hemphill, David Jones, Alan Caymans, Ellen Lassant, Carol Lohmeyer, Paula Merkley, Chris Marquardt, Eddie Miner, Carolyn Nyes, Jan Snath, Karen Stiltner, Rod Thurman, Luann Trask, Joyce Ugla, Linnea Ugla, and Mark Henson. Are there any others? We joyfully give thanks for all the grace present in our lives. We are especially thankful for the birth of Tatum Grace Cleveland and pray that you bless her and her family. We give thanks for our 26 young people attending camp. We pray that you give them journey mercies, watch over them, and bless their week together. You are the God of our salvation. You have enabled us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Hold in your eternal light those who have died. Lord, in your mercy. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting your promise to hear us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. God of mercy and grace, the eyes of all wait upon you, and you open your hand in blessing. Fill us with good things at your table, that we may come to the help of all in need, through Jesus Christ our Redeemer and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Mm. 
lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Remember today, second week of the month, we commune via intinction where you will receive the bread or a wafer in your hand. Hold on to it until the chalice comes by and dip or intinct it into the ch chalice. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. O oh God, as a mother comforts her child, so you comfort your people, carrying us in your arms and satisfying us with this food and drink, the body and blood of Christ. Send us now as your disciples, announcing peace and proclaiming that the reign of God has come near through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. I'm going to invite the congregation to be seated, and I'm going to ask the young people going to camp, as well as those adults going to camp, please come forward. And something I neglected in the prayers, Jeff Dykman, who is the nephew to Willis and Nadine Melgren, he is having a liver transplant on Friday, so uh, keep him in your prayers. All right, everyone, come this way, take a couple steps forward, and face the congregation, and I'll stand over here. I know that's a hard thing to face the congregation. A handsome bunch of people. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we pray for all the campers and our adults heading off to Camp Tomashinga. First, we pray that you would calm both parents and children nervous about this time away from home and allow these children to enjoy this time away in your creation with you. We pray especially for safe travels as they journey to camp. We also pray for an openness of hearts and minds for all the campers and counselors and uh, adults that we are sending that they may experience all that you have to offer them this week. We commend our campers into your care. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everyone out there is praying that you have a great week. You may go. I guess we'll applaud for them. There's still a sign-up sheet for uh, the Cardinals game and all the things that you will get with your ticket to the game. So uh, Lutheran Night at the Cardinals, you could sign up for that. I don't think I have anything else to announce, so please rise and receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
guided by the gospel, we go in peace, remember the poor.